Hi, uh, this is Bonnie Jo Campbell, sitting here on my porch and doing a selfie, I guess, of reading from my story, The Fishing Dog in the Runaway Anthology. Uh, let's see, The Fishing Dog. At first, Gwen thought it was Jake coming downstream in the boat, but it turned out to be his brother, Dan. At the noise of the boat engine, the yellow Labrador retriever across the river moved up the lawn toward its house and a great blue heron who must have been fishing on the other side of the cabin launched itself into flight. Gwen watched it ascend wishing she'd known the bird was nearby so she could have spied on it. There was another guy with Dan but she could see he was about half as big as Jake. Maybe they'd brought food. She'd like to eat something besides fish that didn't come out of a can. She reeled in her line and grabbed Dan's prow as he idled along the dock. What do you think? yelled Dan over the engine noise. You got a new boat, Dan. He cut the motor. She's pretty, ain't she? He said. Got a steal on her from a guy getting divorced. Where's Jake? Gwen asked. She didn't usually talk to Dan. Usually she just stood by while Jake and Dan talked to each other. That's what I come to tell you, honey. Jake's in jail. For what? For killing a man. You're lying, she said. I ain't gonna lie about a thing like that, Dan said. Jake didn't mean it for, ha for it to happen. Well, if it's an accident, they'll let him go, she said. Except this ain't the first time. Gwen pointed at the five-gallon fish pail that Dan was lifting off the boat. Give me that. Gwenny, Dan said, are you crying? He rested the bucket on the dock and put his arms around her. Dan was fatter than his brother, but he didn't feel all that different up close. Gwen thought of pulling away from him, of running into the woods until she fell into stinging nettles and poison ivy. She thought of smashing her fists into Dan's chest. If she'd had an axe in her hand, she'd have swung it into a tree. She grabbed the bucket, sloshing water on herself and Dan. Two or three of the catfish inside were longer than her forearms. Their seaweedy whiskers brushed against the sides as they slid over one another. Gwen said, I've been waiting for a catfish. She held her head up to let the tears drain through the backs of her eyes. These come from Willow Island, Dan said. He seemed even fatter suddenly, unsure of himself, waiting for a cue from Gwen, who wasn't accustomed to giving cues, especially not to men twice her age. Who you got with you, she asked. The other man made no motions to disembark. Oh, that's just Charlie. He works at the plant with me. Charlie was skinny and had no teeth, so his lips caved in. Dan took the fish from the bucket one by one and held each carefully as he nailed its head to the nearest oak. The three tails strained and curled against the bark. The men stood by while Gwen stunned one with the hammer and began tearing off its skin with pliers. Thank you.